So building more about what a bar the baroreceptor adrenaline does besides stabilizing the blood pressure, let's go through some of the confusion of what it does to your body. Um, so building on the theme is though it's trying to stabilize blood pressure and stimulates heart rate response. Um, and can watch all the videos again, the blood pressure centers do go to the brain. So the brain needs to be notified that you're not right. You might logically say, oh, I have this, this disorder, POTS, or orthostatic disorder. Logically, I know that. But periodically, your brain, and often maybe, your brain will think it's sort of in survival mode. So this can impede and impair your best thinking, your creativity mode, and lead to some of that experience of why you can't think and that sort of brain fog experience. So that's one aspect how sympathetic activity can impact the body function, that sort of inability to think. We call it downstairs brain, that inability to process. Upstairs brain is more the creative thinking, analytical, methodical, cognitive part of the brain, which is higher functioning, downstairs brain survival thinking. So sympathetic adrenaline activity keeps the brain much more in survival mode. You can't focus on many things. Um, you, you, you know, you just are there in, in fight or flight mode. Even though logically you may know you have this diagnosis, um, you're trying to do your best, it gets you there. And that's where a lot of work with controlling the, the disorder helps and much work with medication. Sometimes we use different types of therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, wellness therapy, and the role of health psychology can be paramount that you can find with us or your local resources in your community and biofeedback can help. Another aspect of um, adrenaline are the eyes. It will cause dryness and also the pupillary response. So in sympathetic response to survival, fight or flight, your pupils think you're in trouble. So laying light in, danger in, so you can see things. So often the pupils won't constrict as well. So in the, the idea that most of our history, we've been more this animal in the wild, but in modern age, your pupils are not constricting as if you're trying to let, so you can see things in the wild or danger, survival mode, the lion's are gonna get you, the bear's gonna get you, um, that type of mode of survival. But in the modern world, you're gonna have more challenge in sympathetic adrenal mode to see cell phones, computers, focusing with objects, um, squinting. Um, so if you might go to the eye doctor and say, you can see, but it might be your pupillary response. Some of you might have very impressive large pupils. Um, again, working on controlling the sympathetic response will help this dry mouth the very common manifestation. So sympathetic will cause a dryness of the mouth, which can really often be more than just medication effect, but always review medications. Ideally, if you're in survival mode, you're not, most, not meant to be eating often. So it creates that idea that you're not gonna be talking or eating, but just surviving. The gut, after the blood vessel circulation issue is impaired is probably the biggest area of the body organ system impaired. Let's go through the dry mouth, um, which can affect your teeth, your dentition. It, it could also be lead to a lot of confusion for other disorders like Sjogren's that we do see Sjogren's in some POTS patients. Often people it can be very misdiagnosed or confounding with the dryness, but throat tightness, swallowing, and much of the control here is more parasympathetic. So sympathetic tone will counteract that. So we'll see throat tightness, difficulty swallowing, feeling a strangled tightness. Many of our patients will need speech therapy or muscle therapy, physical therapy, a massage, gentle chiropractor without cracking or adjusting the neck to relax these muscles here. The gut is the esophagus, the stomach, small intestines, large intestines. So we will see things where irritable bowel, diarrhea to constipation, diarrhea, then constipation, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, reflux, acid, hiccuping, all this sort of stuff because digestion is vagal, parasympathetic. So in a sympathetic state, you impede or impair the digestion, which is parasympathetic. And um, that will cause issues in that regards. 
Um, so controlling sympathetic help digestion, many of our patients will have many of these challenges um, of digestion. And so it could be a big deal eating um, and, and many, many problems in that level of people sometimes absorbing nutrients, um, food intolerances, much of your immune systems in your gut, people start suddenly will develop food allergies and, and challenging uh, digesting foods. We can also see that's where people start to emerge into reactive hypoglycemia for some people, um, where food is suddenly absorbing um, erratically and then suddenly absorbs a spike of insulin and then um, a, the insulin causes glucose to drop and you get a drop of blood glucose. So we can see almost like that dumping syndrome phenomenon in some of the patients. So if you've had episodes of low blood glucose, you can see that experience of bloating, suddenly you're eating carbs and um, you, you'll have like like a wooziness and you'll have like insulin spike and then dropping your blood glucose. And it's challenging because many of patients will feel better to eat carbs. Um, it's easier to get to, easier to process for eating. You feel better, but then it's a trap that you, it backfires later. We try to encourage people to eat more proteins and even fats, though it might initially feel, not feel right, but to get in that direction, to train the gut and control the sympathetic in addition, related to the gut is the urinary system. The adrenaline makes you want to feel this need to urinate or go or urgency or irritation of the bladder. You can see almost like an interstitial cystitis pattern of just need to go, 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 or irritation. So controlling the adrenaline all controls these symptoms. Um, skin can feel very tingly, hypersensitive, sweating, cold, all those issues of perfusion. Um, your senses are all alerted um, in a sympathetic state. It can be very confusing to patients because, and also to clinicians, because tingling, burning, tingling, hypersenses can be confusing. Think it's neuropathy, the workup's negative, and it might just be sympathetic activation of the skin happening, as well as hyperperfusion of the skin due to poor blood flow. But sympathetic activation can cause. Um, unique sensory phenomena to the skin. Sympathetic activation can also cause sweating, as we mentioned, so controlling that often help people do better. The other aspect we can see with sympathetic are the muscles tighten up, so all the flexors, neck tightness, arm muscles, thigh muscles, back muscles will tighten up in patients, so often people will need medications for that, physical therapy, gentle exercise, all these aspects will help people do um, better. There, these are the big areas of the body get impacted with the sympathetic. You start initially with poor circulation challenges, and then the body has its ongoing sort of cascade response to sympathetic um, activation or ramification. So it's really important to realize what your body's doing as a response. We wish you well, and the more education to help helps you do better. Watch these videos again and again will help you uh, take care of yourself and believe in yourself.